Um, this I'm talking about here. This formula, you could you could just accept it as being uh, true if you want. I do want to show you where it comes from, though, because I think for this one, you might uh, benefit from that. Okay, so that formula. We already have a formula or a couple formulas for the for the sum of a, a series when it's finite, right? We have one that says Sn is A1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. If you're okay with this idea that we looked at up here that things do have a finite sum when the when the ratios when the absolute value of the ratio is less than one, or in other words, when it's a sort of a small number between negative one and one, and they don't have a finite sum when the number part's bigger. Okay, so we're going to focus on looking at how you can calculate it if you do know that the ratio is smaller. Let's think about this. So this is the ratio here. This is the important part of this formula. If you notice the formula that we have up above there, this is the part that's similar. A over 1 minus R. Okay, you notice that this is A over 1 minus R. So we're going to look at what happens with this part in this formula. If you, if you make the change here that, or if you, if you start to look at what happens as you have um, the ratio small number here, if our absolute value R is less than 1, what happens to a number if I take a number and start raising it to a bigger and bigger power here. We're going to look at it on the calculator to amaze you with my calculating powers here. Abilities. Not powers. Not my own calculating powers. Let's take a simple number like 0.5, like the one that we just had. If I repeatedly raise this to a higher and higher power, which I'm going to do just by keep multiplying it by itself, what happens to my result as I keep raising it to a higher and higher power? Look Look at the screen, not out the window. Okay, look at the screen. I know <laughs> I know there's no contest on what you're more uh, excited by, the nice weather outside or this, but what happens to a number as you as you raise it to a higher and higher power? Smaller and smaller, right? If I keep going here, now you're now there's no way you're looking out the window, I know. This is amazing to watch. I hope you realize those numbers are getting smaller. Scientific notation there. What is this going to approach as we, if we allow this to go infinitely, we hire someone to sit here and push this button infinite number of times, what's going to eventually happen? I realize infinitely the batteries are going to run out and the calculator is going to break and all those things before you get to an infinite number of pushing the button, right? the button will disintegrate before you can push it an infinite number of times. All of those things aside, what is this getting closer and closer to? Zero, right? So this is the key here. This is, this is going to sound like calculus, and if you're taking calculus, this will help you, I think, being able to think like this. As n approaches infinity, that's what that means. You say as n approaches, what does the word approach mean? It gets closer to, right? It's hard to get closer to infinity because it's infinity, but nevertheless, that's what mathematicians say. As n approaches infinity, what happens to r to the n? r to the n approaches what? Zero. Zero. Okay, that's if, if you're okay with that, that's a huge thing for calculus is understanding what I just wrote there. Okay, r to the n approaches zero. This is this is only if if r if the ratio absolute value is less than one. If the number is a smaller number like that, what can I change this to? This formula then, what can I change that formula to if we know that the thing I have highlighted in pink there is going to get closer and closer to zero? So if I'm changing this now to S infinity, as in what's the sum if you allow it to have an infinite number of terms, what happens here? What happens to that thing in pink? 
It gets closer and closer to zero the closer you get to infinity. If I'm saying what what is it if I allow it to be infinity, what is it? This I can just treat it as what? What can I treat this as? I can just treat this as zero. I realize that's hard because we can't actually get to infinity. But you're thinking if I let this go to infinity here, that's going to be zero. So what am I left with then? What can, now what can I simplify this to? What can I simplify that to? One, right? Or in other words, just A over 1 minus R. For some reason, on your Math 12 formula sheet, they don't put an infinity for S infinity. They just put S. That's what, that's what it is. This is for the sum of an infinite geometric series. Okay, sum of an infinite geometric series... There's a big condition on this. If what is true, it isn't for any infinite geometric series. It's only for if what's true. Something about R. <laughs> if that is less than 1, right? If that R is greater than 1, what did we say again? Or what did I say? Then how do you find the sum? If the ratio is bigger than 1, how do you find the sum? Want to go back to the pizza examples? Want to scroll back up here to the pizza examples? If, if the ratio is bigger than 1, what's true? There is no sum. It doesn't have a finite sum. That formula only applies in two cases. Now you can bet that when you're doing work here, I know that... Uh, I know that you, Math 12 students are generally good memorizers and good, good at remembering everything their teacher says. And a lot of Math 12 students in the past, they'll use the formula for any sum that they're asked to find, whether it has it or not, right? You have to know whether it exists first before you actually find it. Okay, then there is no finite sum. So what I'm talking about here is in these questions. You look at this right now and decide whether there's a finite sum before you use the formula. Pick one of those right now that does not have a finite sum. Which one doesn't have a finite sum? C does not have a finite sum. The reason being because the ratio is 3. R equals 3. This has no finite sum. The problem is, here's the this is this is not like you, but here's the math twelve students from the past. They will just say, "Oh, I know something." They're they're thinking, "I I was I know I was daydreaming, but there was something about some formula that looks like this." And they check their formula sheet and they see that formula and they say, "Oh, that must be what I use." So I'm going to put in, uh, I'm going to put those numbers in there and say, "Okay, a is two, the ratio is three." So they plug the numbers and they say, "Oh, good, it works out here." 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And they say, they really do, they say the sum is equal to negative 1. I'm pretty sure that if I asked even grade 8s and said, aside from the fact they wouldn't be able to comprehend the infinity part of it, but they would think about whether this is reasonable or not, I think more so than the average grade 12 would. I think we forget to think about whether our answer makes sense. Um... Is there what logic can you use to know you're wrong there? What logic can you use? You're asked to add up even the first three here add up to far more than negative one, right? It's all positive numbers. There's no way it can be negative one. So think about what you're doing before you just randomly plug numbers in. Okay? So when you're thinking of that formula, you have to realize it says if absolute value of the ratio is less than one. That's what it is. I am going to leave this problem to you at the bottom to solve on your own. It's the bouncing ball problem before, but it's not It's not if there's a finite number of bounces. This is if you allow it to keep going. We're going to model it with an infinite series, even though it has a finite, in reality, it has a finite number of bounces. We're going to model this. 
I want you to pretend that this is 100 centimeters and it bounces to three quarters of its height each time. You don't actually have to go and uh, investigate it because we did it together. And then in a little while, we're going to talk about sigma notation. Work on some of the questions in this section. Don't just work on the assignment.